Hi hey guys, welcome back to the pharmacology review. Um, today we're going to be doing uh, headaches. So um, to understand a little bit about headache pharmacology, you have to understand uh, a bit about headache uh, pathophysiology. So I guess when it comes to the pathophysiology of headache, there's different mechanisms of things that can be causing a headache. So the first things that you can think of is um, headaches can be caused by vasoconstrictions followed by vasodilation and blood pooling. So the blood pooling kind of um, irritates, I would guess, the meningeal vessels and then causes uh, headaches. So you can use uh, this strategy and target it to constrict the blood vessels uh, and to prevent pooling. So the meningeal vessels have some serotonin receptors that cause vasoconstrictions. So you can give a medication that act on these serotonin receptors like tryptanes that can um, that can relieve the headache and cause vaso, uh, vasoconstriction. Uh, there is beta-2 receptors on the meningeal vessels and then beta-2 receptors cause vasodilation. So if you block these beta-2 receptors, you're blocking the catecholamines and you're relieving that uh, vasodilation. Um, there are some vasoactive substances that cause vasodilation and blood pooling. Uh, these uh, substances are blocked by uh, uh, verapamil, which if you remember, it's a calcium channel blocker. So the first pathophysiology uh, of headache is vasodilation and blood pooling. Um, second thing is that there is, I guess, uh, neuron hyper excitability. So if the neurons get excited, um, that can cause a headache. Um, and we've used anti-epileptics to decrease the excitability of the neurons um, to relieve the headache. Uh, there are some nociceptive uh, uh, receptors on the neurons, uh, so you can use, nociceptive uh, just means, I guess, pain, um, so you can use NSAIDs or opioids to relieve the headache caused by these. Uh, hypoxia can also cause headache, um, so uh, we've used oxygen to relieve uh, hypoxia. And then there is also some dopamine hypersensitivity, uh, which causes the nausea and the vomiting that's associated with the headache. So you can use a medication that specifically targets uh, the dopamine receptors and to relieve the nausea and vomiting, which is metoclopramide. So if you think about the pathophysiology of the headache, vasodilation and blood pooling, uh, neuron hyperexcitability, uh, nociceptive receptors uh, in the neurons, hypoxia, and then dopamine hypersensitivity. Uh, so the treatment for uh, headaches, and today we're going to specifically be talking about uh, treatment of uh, migraine headaches. Um, it consists of two uh, different specific treatments, the abortive treatment and the preventative treatment. The abortive treatment is to abort or to stop the headache that the patient is having um, currently. Uh, the preventive treatment is, you know, as it says, it's to prophylax or to prevent uh, patients from having recurrent headaches. So abortive treatment consist of non-specific medications like NSAIDs, opioids, or metoclopramide, uh, and specific agents that uh, target serotonin like ergotamine or tryptanes. Uh, preventative medications uh, consist of anti-epileptics, uh, tricyclic antidepressants, specifically amitriptyline, uh, beta blockers, specifically propranolol, I didn't write it on this slide, uh, verapamil, and you can also use botulinum toxin to prevent uh, migraine headaches. So we'll start with uh, abortive treatment um, of the migraine. So we'll start with the nonspecific treatment first. Uh, first thing that uh, we can use is NSAID combination, and this is you can use acetaminophen, uh, NSAIDs like ibuprofen or naproxen, and caffeine also. Uh, these medications are usually combined, and you find them over the counter. So these medications target uh, which receptors? The nociceptive receptors, correct. Um, Antiemetics are used uh, like metoclopramide, and metoclopramide um, is a dopamine blocker and also a serotonin agonist. So if you remember dopamine, there is some dopamine hypersensitivity that causes the nausea and vomiting. So there's dopamine receptors in the brain that kind of causes the nausea, and there's dopamine receptors in the stomach that kind of causes the vomiting as well. 
um, so that treats the nausea and vomiting. Uh, Metoclopramide specifically is a prokinetic agent. So do you guys know what a prokinetic agent means? It's just pro plus kinetic motility. So it increases gastric motility. Um, third is uh, there are some opioid medications that are used for migraines. The first one is butorphanol. So um, it's a kappa agonist. Um, and it's a mu antagonist. You don't really have to know that much, but know that butorphanol is an opioid. It's used for migraine. That's the most common use of butorphanol, uh, and it can come in nasal spray. Uh, so if patient is not able to tolerate oral medication, you can spray it in their nose. Tramadol is another opioid. Uh, it's a weak opioid, um, and it works on the mu receptor. So know that opioids can also be used as an abortive treatment, and it's a nonspecific treatment. Now we go into the specific treatments of migraine. And when I talk about specific treatments, I talk about serotonin agonists. So you guys remember from the first slide that serotonin receptors are found on meningeal blood vessels and cause vasoconstriction. So it relieves the blood pooling. So the specific treatments are uh, separated into first generation, which is uh, non-specific serotonin agonists, and then second generation that work on specific or particular serotonin receptors. So the first ones is ergotamine or dihydroergotamine. Uh, it's a non-specific serotonin agonist. It also has some alpha agonist activity, so it causes vasoconstriction. It's used for migraine. And, you know, as we, as ev evidence from the mechanism that causes vasoconstriction. Um, there is a contraindication for these medication is to not be used within 24 hours of tryptanes. And the reason for that is because it causes extra vasoconstriction um, and, um, uh, and can be dangerous for the patient. Second generation, um, the scientists kind of uh, were uh, worked a little bit harder and they found specific uh, serotonin receptors on the meningeal vessels that the tryptanes uh, cause it. So the tryptanes, I guess I didn't put it here, but the example of it is sumatriptane. That is the most common, uh, most common one, um, and you'll see all of the medications in the in tryptane. Um, these are used for migraines, um, and the education for the patient is to be administered at the earliest sign of migraine to allow it to work. Uh, it comes in oral route if the patient is able to tolerate it, subcutaneous route, the patient can inject it under the skin or nasal route. Side effect is uh, can cause flushing and tingling. Um, they are contraindicated in vasculopathic patients. What do I mean by vasculopathic patients? Um, so these are patients with arterial disease, meaning coronary artery disease or peripheral vascular disease uh, or hypertension because they cause vasoconstriction and they will... Um, uh, they will worsen the arterial disease. Uh, and they have a maximum of one dose per 24 hours, and that's because of the vasoconstriction. The exam questions or the step question will specifically ask you, patient is coming in with a migraine, uh, what is the mechanism of action of the medication that used to abort the, the migraine? And the, and the answer will be uh, serotonin. Um, or they'll ask another question, patient has a migraine, um, and uh, they have a history of coronary artery disease, or they have a history of MI, uh, what is one medication that you want to avoid? And it would be either uh, ergotamine or a tryptine. Um, so our next slide talks about the preventative treatment. So now we aborted the the headache or we stopped the headache. Now we want to prevent it from it from it's becoming recurrent uh, because that's certainly not pleasant for the patient. So when do we use preventative treatments? So the indications is a patient gets more than two attacks per month um, and you get disability for about three months. Uh, or if you have contraindication or failure of acute treatment, um, or you're using the abortive medications more than uh, twice a week. So let's say you're getting these headaches twice a week and you're needing your sumatriptane, uh, then uh, you can use preventative uh, treatment. So preventative treatment is consists of antiepileptics, antidepressants, 
beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and sometimes you can use botulinum toxin. So the anti-epileptics, the most common ones is valproic acid and topiramate. I really want you guys to know topiramate. Uh, it's a very common test question because they, and also valproic acid, because they will ask you uh, what uh, this patient is coming in for headaches that are recurrent, and they'll give you a story. And they'll ask you what medication you want to put them on. Uh, so the answer would be valproic acid or topiramate. Uh, mechanism of action and the, and the um, side effects, I'm not going to talk about it because they're covered by Mike in the anti-epileptic sections. Tricyclic antidepressants, specifically amitriptyline, uh, that is used uh, in preventative treatment. They block serotonin norepinephrine reuptake. Uh, beta blockers can be used specifically for prenolol. That is the most commonly used and the most uh, one that we have data on is propranolol. It's a non-selective beta-1 and beta-2 blocker. Uh, it can be helpful in patients that have hypertension. So let's say, for example, your patient, patient has high blood pressure and migraines. Uh, that would be a perfect medication to put them, uh, put them on. Uh, calcium channel blockers, verapamil can... Um, uh, can be used. And lastly, neurotoxin. So botulinum toxin um, is, is Botox, and it decreases acetylcholine in the synapses. Um, and I guess you, um, you want to ask, well, how is it related to migraine? I looked it up, and it's not really clear, and I think it's related to uh, decreasing of release of nociceptive substances. So it along with acetylcholine, decreases some of the substances that are nociceptive uh, that causes the, uh, the migraine. Um, so finally, a little bit, uh, what I want you to know is the difference between abortive and preventative. Uh, as I said, abortive will not prevent future headaches. They only treat the current headache. Um, uh, preventative is to prevent future headaches. Um, and a little bit summary uh, on headaches. So migraine, cluster, and tension. Migraine headache acutely use the tryptanes or the dihydroergotamine and the NSAIDs. Prophylaxis is propranolol, calcium channel blockers like verapamil, amitriptyline, and antiepileptics. For cluster headache, I really want you guys to know this, but acutely how you want to treat cluster headache is oxygen. So cluster headache is induced by hypoxia. And if you give them oxygen, they will uh, get relieved uh, soon. Triptanes are also helpful in intranasal lidocaine. Uh, for prophylaxis, calcium channel blocker, verapamil is what I, got, what I want you guys to, to know about. That is the main treatment for the prophylaxis for cluster headache. Antiepileptics can be used as well. Tension headache is the headache that you know all of us get uh, acutely. You can use NSAIDs, Tylenol, or caffeine. Uh, prophylaxis, if these happen a lot, I have not seen a lot of people prophylax for tension headache, but you can prophylax using any of the medications that are used for uh, prophylaxis. So that ends our discussion with headaches.